Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln on this Sunday morning, or for us here, Friday morning. We're trying something new this week. Normally, we record on Friday, and this week, we all recorded our parts separately and then uh, edited them together in a process. So in this call, uh, all the members of the staff are here together, and we just want to say hello. We are glad to see you, and welcome to this service. Um, and we'll begin. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln on this Sunday morning. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. We're joined today in this video by members of the staff of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Our membership and admin coordinator, Kelly Ross, is hosting the call and coordinating the technology. Bob Fusen, Gene Helms, and Chelsea Krafka are here with reflections, music, and support. And several of us are present in the chat room running next to this YouTube video on Sunday morning. We also have lay pastoral care folks on call this morning, so if you need someone to talk to, reach out and we will get you in contact with them. We're still practicing this new way of being together, and it remains a time of anxiety in the world. But it is also a time of great possibility. We have learned about how to be a church together and apart. Much has changed around us, but what has not changed is the vision that we share. That the Unitarian Church of Lincoln aspires to be a loving community, uniting reason with spiritual exploration to transform ourselves and the world. That is a big vision in this place. And we know that creating a loving community begins with welcome. So whether this is your first time joining us or your 500th. If you've stumbled onto this YouTube video by accident at 2 a.m. and you're wondering where the cat videos went, you are welcome. If you have been here faithfully every Sunday that we've put out these videos, you are welcome and it is good to see you again. If you came here hopeful or heartbroken, whatever your age, gender, skin color, whomever you love, you are welcome here with us. More than ever, it is important that we share the warmth, love, and light of this place. So our ask to you is simple. Do not keep this church, this community, a hidden gem. Invite people to come. We have this service on Sunday morning, Zoom Vespers on Thursday nights, interviews and daily updates on YouTube, connection groups for members, talent shows, music, offerings for families, come join us. Be a part of this and invite people in. For now, as we enter into worship, take a moment to center yourself. Take a few deep breaths. Find a comfortable place for your body. And let us begin. chalice lighting words this morning are from the poet Seamus Haney, from his larger work, The Cure at Troy. Human beings suffer, he writes. They torture one another. They get hurt and get hard. No poem or play or song can fully right a wrong inflicted or endured. The innocent in jail beat on their bars together. A hunger striker's father stands in the graveyard, dumb. The police widow in veils faints at the funeral home. History says, don't hope on this side of the grave. But then once in a lifetime, the longed, for, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. So hope for a great sea change on the far side of revenge. Believe that further shore is reachable from here. Believe in miracle and cures and healing wells. Call miracle self-healing the utter self-revealing double take of feeling. If there's fire on the mountain or lightning and storm, 
and a god speaks from the sky. That means someone is hearing the outcry and the birth cry of new life at its term. Our opening hymn this morning is number 298 in the gray hymnal, Wake Now My Senses. In the early 1920s, Norbert and Maha Kapik led the Unitarian Church in Czechoslovakia. It was a strange time in a recently independent country trying to think through a new way of doing religion. And what we call now the flower ceremony in Unitarian Universalism came out of that church that they founded in Prague in an effort to bring together a congregation of deeply varied theologies around a central ritual, the Chapics developed this. On a Sunday in early summer, each person would come to the church with a flower, plant it in a central bouquet, and then leave with a different flower brought by a different person. This is the week that we would normally have the flower celebration. And indeed, folks have been sending in pictures of flowers all week, which we'll show during the next song. But it's a little different this year as we gather online. Like Prague in the aftermath of World War I and the Spanish flu, we live in a world where beauty and meaning are hard to find and all the more important for it. It's a time both of enormous grief in the world and maybe, maybe it's a time when the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. We live in a profound moment. I have little doubt that years from now, I, we will remember 2020 as a fulcrum point 
that it will join 1619, 1776, 1865, 1929, 1968 as a year that signifies more than just a date. And I'm not sure exactly what it's going to signify yet. I don't know that anybody is. But here's the good news. In the midst of 2020, in the midst of this fulcrum point in history, we don't have to do it alone. Chapik knew that a century ago, which is why these words of the blessing said over the flowers brought by the gathered. Infinite spirit of love, Chapik wrote, we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us, amid diversities of knowledge and gifts, to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship and devotion, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of your most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do your work in the world. Whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do your work in the world. Churches are the community, not the building. This is a thing that we have preached for decades, if not centuries, but it is inarguable right now. And the community exists because of the work that, that literally hundreds of people put into making it happen from volunteer teachers to audiovisual folks on Sunday morning to open circle leaders and program council liaisons, this church only exists because the efforts of all of us are needed. So thank you. We see you, we honor you, and we are so glad to be in community with each of you. Later in this service, we'll take turns thanking different groups within the church. But for now, as this next song plays, think about all of the people in this place who mean something to you. Normally, this is our time to share joys and sorrows. And indeed, if you have a joy or sorrow on your heart, please share it in the chat box. But also, as Bill Carpenter plays, this next song and pictures of flowers from our members play. Think about who in this congregation you are thankful for, what they have meant for you in this last year. If you type it into the chat, that's great, but maybe also give them a call this afternoon to tell them what their place in your life has been. Let's begin. Thank you. 
I am so incredibly grateful for everyone who has volunteered in our youth programs cluster and with adult education this last year. Whether you were one of our 40 to 50 teachers and assistants in our classrooms or taught a class for our adult members, worked in our preschool and nursery rooms, or volunteered during an in-gathering, if you participated in one of our all ages events such as the soup supper, we are so fortunate to have your incredible presence in our programs. I would like to extend additional appreciation for those of you who showed up for our Chalice Connections program when we moved to two services. Those of you who have volunteered to help lead our online Zoom Sunday School these last couple of months, and to the amazing members of the RGL committee who give their time and dedication to deepening the connection to UU values with our children and youth. Also to Ashley Fusen, who led our Youth in Action Social Justice Program for middle and high school students. You have all understood in a profound way that you hold a key role in the spiritual nurturing of our church community. The volunteers who work with our young people have accepted a great responsibility. And I wanna be sure that I verbalize how much I respect the commitment which you have made and how your love for our young people really shows. I would also like to thank our children and youth who have showed up on Sunday mornings to play and learn and have fun. We wouldn't have a Sunday school program without you. I miss seeing your smiling faces in person, but I look forward to when we can be together again. Thank you for listening, for encouraging, and for seeing the best in one another. May the warmth that you have so freely shared be reflected back to you in the faces of those whom you have spent time with this last year. May you know in your heart that you have made a difference. We are people of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands who show up. Clearly, we continue to embrace our mission in so many ways. We're showing each other that we love and miss our community. We're finding ways to stay connected and also finding ways to continue learning new things, even during a pandemic. And it's those last three words that I wanna to touch on today. We show up. So let me back up just a little. I was given the honor this morning of thanking the facilities and outreach clusters, as well as all of those who help behind the scenes in the office. It is literally impossible to thank each and every one of you by name because there are so many of you. But I can give you a few examples from the last few months. You're showing up by holding committee meetings online to continue your important work. You're showing up by planting the pantry garden and tending flower beds and picking up branches after a storm. You're showing up by answering the call to hold our banner after the Black Lives Matter march yesterday to the Capitol. And one way that we have not been showing up is for ourselves. We have a lay pastoral care team that is revamped and they have been monitoring their email every day. Very few people have been reaching out to talk to somebody from the lay pastoral care team. So here's what I want to say about that. Pastoral care is not only for people who are going through a major life crisis. It is for anyone who needs a caring, listening person on the other end of the line. And I will be so bold to say that we all need pastoral care these days because we're all grieving losses and we are all missing our community. So reach out. The pastoral care team is here for you. The email will be in chat as it is every Sunday. Clearly, we continue to embrace our mission. We are people of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands who show up. And I feel so blessed to work with such a committed, caring group of people who want to make our world a better place. 
So let's not keep it to ourselves. Tell other people what you have found here. Invite a friend or a family member to a service. Draw the circle wide. One way of proclaiming your love for this place is by putting a yard sign in your front yard. And today's the day. You can come to 6300 A Street anytime today between 8 and 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. and take a, a sign or two home to put in your front yard. If you can't make it over today, let us know and we'll figure out a way of getting one to you. Thank you again. I really appreciate all that you do for our community and you are a blessing. Here at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, we have been so blessed to have such a large number of enthusiastic and energized volunteers in the music area. One of the things we were tasked with this year was growing our program. That means a lot of different things, but it was so joyful to see 40 plus people at the last one hour choir. The entire front of the sanctuary completely engulfed in choir members. That growth is exactly what we're looking for. That enthusiasm, the willingness to give up your evenings, your weekends, uh, your time before church, your coffee hour, uh, learning music that stretches your abilities and makes you uncomfortable. That is really, really giving to the community. So for all of you who volunteered and took part in the choir this year, thank you so much. You have no idea what you bring to this community. Music is a link to the universe, to the unknown. And that's part of our mission here, is to connect people to the unknown. I also need to thank Julie Anderson, our choir director, for all the incredible work that she's done, and our accompanist, Bill Carpenter, a consummate professional who's pulled me out of the fire more times than I can count. Part of my little corner of the music area involves running A Street Band, and A Street has really went above and beyond this year. We did a tent revival in October. We did a Sunday morning rehearsal where we played some of our greatest hits in addition to our Thursday evening rehearsals. Many times this requires the group to give up their evenings, their weekend mornings, practicing and rehearsing music that's a little bit uncomfortable that we might not be super familiar with, stretching our, our comfort zones and trying to think of things outside of the box. It's been a really, really great experience for me to work with that group. So for everyone who participated in A Street this year, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Both groups have gone above and beyond. And that has to happen for our larger ideas to happen. We want to make this church a cultural center for the city of Lincoln. We want to make it a place where anyone can come without any restrictive barriers and participate in art, in music, and in literature. But none of that happens unless we have really good music happening here. And that only happens when we have those energized and enthusiastic volunteers. So for those of you who participated in the music program, be it choir, be it A Street, be it one hour choir, be it serving in an advisory role, thank you so much for everything that you've done. Hello, members and friends. On Friday, June 12th, it was my one year anniversary working for the church. As I look back over the past year of employment, I can't help but think of all the amazing people who came alongside me and helped me learn what I needed to do to serve you best. A special shout out to those who I um, asked the most difficult questions like, what is a cluster? <laughs> Everyone in the membership cluster has been so amazing in helping me acclimate to the church and I'm astounded by the work that everyone does. Without all of the people who volunteer, we would be nothing. And I see every single person that puts in the time and the thought and the effort to make sure that our community stays strong. And I know that when people walk in the door, whether they have been going to the church for decades or whether it's their first time, there are so many opportunities 
for them to learn. There are so many people that want to welcome them in. And I want to thank every single one of you for what you have done over this past year. I want to give a, a little shout out to the open circle groups. They have been uh, very flexible over these past couple months moving online. I also want to thank um, some specific people, especially Judy Hart and Karen Dean Spear. Uh, they have both really helped me in my new role as member coordinator. They have so much knowledge and they have been so patient with me in helping me uh, move into this role. So I want to say thank you to every volunteer, whether you are working with me in the membership or whether you were doing other things in the church. Thank you. I see you and your work is so important to make sure that we can continue being a thriving community. My first task is to thank everyone who helps to make Sunday morning possible at this church. And there's a saying, be like a duck, placid above water and underneath the water, kicking like crazy. And that is not a bad metaphor for what goes on in churches putting worship together on Sunday morning. This fall, we started having planning huddles before each service, bringing together everyone involved on that given Sunday. Worship associates, yes, but also ushers, greeters, coffee makers, staff members, pulpit decorators, musicians. Each Sunday, we filled the office just with that week's volunteers. So for everyone who volunteers your time to make worship a meaningful experience in our community, Thank you so, so much. Second, we are a democratic institution. And one of the true pleasures of my job is working with the elected lay leadership of this congregation. And the program council and the board have had an intense year in church year 2019, 2020. The Program Council was the primary site of the planning for two services that we implemented over the fall and the winter, a move which impacted basically every component of church life and the board. We publish the minutes of our board meeting so you can see just about everything they've talked about in the last year. But what those minutes do not capture is the care with which our board approaches their responsibilities. Congregations are generational endeavors. This church is about to celebrate our 150th anniversary and the responsibility for ensuring that we'll be here for another 150 years lies primarily with the board of trustees. It is a remarkable task and you have been served by remarkable people. I know to the board, I know that this year was more than you signed up for. I know that we met more. I know that we had bigger issues almost every month of the year than we have in some years in the past. Thank you for showing up anyway and for keeping this congregation whole through it. And one last thank you service was built around thanking volunteers and I'm glad that we have done that. But this is not for volunteers, but for our staff. First is for Judy Hart, who stepped away from her job on staff this fall, but is now taking on a role as part of the board of trustees. Thank you. And I look forward to serving you to serving with you in this new role. For our staff this spring. My goodness. A public thanks feel inadequate because so much of what each of you have done has been behind the scenes. But for the congregation, here's, here's what I want you to know about our staff. There is no blueprint, no written job description for what staff at a church should do in the midst of a global pandemic. Since March, 
They have been working from home, working to begin new programs, working to continue existing programs, working to retrofit almost every component of church life into this new paradigm that we're in. And in everything, care for volunteers, care for the congregation. There has been laughter at staff meetings and there have been tears. Kelly, Chelsea, Bob, Jean, thank you. I know thanking people and emoting are not always my strong suit, but I see you. I appreciate you. And to everyone in this community, we see you. This place, whether on YouTube or Zoom or 6300 A Street, exists because of the commitment of our members. So for all of the myriad ways you contribute to this place, thank you and amen. A few announcements as we move towards the end of our time together. First, members and friends continue to receive scam emails that look like they come from the minister, that look like they come from me. Please do not fall prey to these scammers. A couple of things that you can be aware of is that you can always check what email address has sent an email. The name may say Oscar Sinclair, but if the email address attached to it is not minister at unitarianlincoln.org, that is not me. Please do not respond to it and certainly do not send it money. Secondly, I will never ever ask for donations or gift cards outside of the regular channels of donating to the church. It just won't happen. So if you ever see a request for gift cards, know that that's not coming from me, that that's a scam. Third, you can always either email me directly or call me directly if you have any worry that an email that you've gotten from me is, is not legitimate. Many of you have done that in the last weeks and months. I appreciate that you're doing it. I know when these scam emails have hit because I get about 12 emails in the space of 10 minutes, all saying, is this you? It doesn't sound like you. So please keep doing that if you have any worries about anything that you get purportedly from me. We've also been talking over the last week about this new uh, program for outreach that we have that I'm really excited that, that we get to launch today. About a week ago, the Unitarian Church of Lincoln got a whole bunch of yard signs. They look like this. They have different messages on them. And they're a way to make sure that we are not a hidden gem. Very, very literally, the idea is for our members to put these in their yard, to put them in your windows, and today is the day to pick them up. Right now, as you're watching this on Sunday morning, there are 150 of these yard signs in the yard at 6300 A Street at our church building. So we would love it today if sometime between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. you came by the church for just a moment and picked up one or two of these signs for your home. We're asking uh, if you're able and willing um, for a free will donation to the discretionary fund to help cover the cost of these signs. They, they're about $10 each for the church. It's important to say though that we're not selling these. Um, so if you if you cannot afford that, don't worry about it. It's more important that we get these signs out in the community. And if you are able to help defray the costs, we would love that as well. One way to contribute to the offering or to the discretionary fund is through text giving. So you can, as this um, video plays, text UC Lincoln space and the amount you wish to give to 73256, 73256. We'll also run that announcement in the chat box so that you can see it uh, on Sunday. As we draw this time to its end, 
have one last piece of music from our one hour choir. This is going to be quite a treat. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you to the One Hour Choir and to Julie Ennerson for putting that together and to Bob Pewson for our, our music direction all year long. We end our service by extinguishing the chalice, the symbol of our shared Unitarian Universalism. And we extinguish the chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry with us until we are together again. Amen and be at peace.